Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are on a mission. Spring is arriving, we are in that transitional period of changing seasons, and a trench coat becomes extremely useful in this time of the year. A trench coat is a classic piece that I don't have in my wardrobe. I know, mind blown, but I've just never found one that has ticked all of the boxes and has fit into my budget. It would have been amazing to just get the quintessential trench coat from Burberry that is basically perfect, but the bank account does not allow it. So I thought that this year I would be smart about it and I would do a little digging on more affordable brands. So that led to this video. Today we're going to find out if affordable slash fast fashion retailers are able to deliver a perfect trench coat. I have a selection of five here that range in price, that range in style. So we're gonna go through them together and see if we have a favorite. I have to say though that I have tried them on and for a few of them, the fit isn't great. Not because I bought the wrong size, but because perhaps they are a little bit more oversized. Maybe they are too long. So just keep that in mind. I am very short. I am 159 centimeters tall, which I don't know how much that is in inches. I'll leave it here. If you're taller than me, if you are wider on the shoulders than me, perhaps these would fit you a little bit better, but that's not a problem that you will see with all of them. So before we do a little try on, I would also like to point out that I'm not going to go through the history of the trench coat on this video because it is a pretty long history. It has been around since the 19th century, basically. So if you want to know more about the history of it, about the details and the historical facts that built the trench coat, I will leave an article by Vogue on the description box because it is amazing. If you're a fashion geek like I am, you will love it. So let's get to it. Let's begin with the most affordable option from H&M. This comes for under $70, if I'm not mistaken, $64.99. I have to say that I don't think it is possible to produce a good trench coat by that price point. It's just a matter of quality of materials and construction. At the end of the day, this has no cotton in it. It is 100% uh, synthetic materials. We're talking 93% elastin, 7% polyester with 100% polyester lining. You can see that the fabric is not really that cotton gabardine. It's a little bit more like that classic H&M fabric that they use for a lot of different things when they're doing tailoring. The problem with this is that one, I find it really slinky, really lacking in structure, which is something that you want in a trench coat. If it's not going to look like it's holding up its own, it really just looks cheap. But there's always the practical factor in the sense that this does not repel moisture. So just to show you, I'm going to do a little test. Bottle of water, a little bit of the fabric. Do you see how it just absorbed that? Even if this is totally synthetic. The fact that if you get caught in the rain with this coat and it starts to absorb that water, you'll start feeling cold, you'll start feeling humid, and this will probably start disintegrating in a couple of years because the fabric will keep kind of that moisture in. It does have a few classic features from a trench coat, beginning with the epaulettes. These are the shoulder straps with the buttons that makes it very military kind of reminds us of those classic trench coats from World War I. Also has the double breasting. It has the sort of revere collar that is very trench coat as well. It's that wide triangular kind of collar that opens up, but you can see that the fabric is so slinky that it doesn't even stay open. I can name a few positive points, such as the multiple stitching around the collar, also around the belt, which will usually give it a little bit more structure. So if you want to wear your collar popped up, if you want to have your belt not hanging around, those are nice things to have, but it doesn't make up for the rest of the pitfalls in this coat. Next up is this little number from Zara. This comes at $109. 
It is 62% organic cotton, so it has a bit more natural fabrics than the H&M option, and 38% elasto multiester. And I have to say that when I saw the piece online, I already knew I wasn't going to love it as much. Number one, the fit. It is very oversized, so it'll get you that silhouette of that we've been seeing a lot lately of those oversized trench coats, very 90s, a bit more androgynous, which has nothing to do with my wardrobe. But I wanted to see if at least the little features and details made up for it in case that's a silhouette you're going for, but I don't think they do. You can see that the coat has no lining. The fabric is a bit more substantial than the H&M, but it's still fairly light, so it doesn't give it a lot of structure. The buttons look quite cheap and plasticky. It doesn't have the epaulettes. It has the back vent. This is a feature that on a lot of trench coats it is present because back in the day when people used to wear this all day long and they would be under the rain or they would be running around, this little part, this little flap would allow for air circulation. So it would almost create an air conditioning behind your back. They also added some sleeve loops, but these are sewn in. So it's not like you're getting it all around like you would in a Burberry, it's just an applique. It has no closure around the collar, so the H&M had it better. If you look at it, it does button up all the way up. It also has a little hook here that allows you to really close it off. This guy does not have that. The flimsy fabric is even more evident on the belt. You will see that unlike the H&M that has the multiple threads going through that were sewn. This is just hanging there and you can see that it has no structure at all. So it will just toss and turn and look extremely unfinished and unpolished. I would pass on this one as well. It just does not tick all of the boxes for me. Then we move on to Uniqlo. I had a lot of expectations for this trench coat because I have seen it featured in a lot of influencers' profiles and everybody said that for the price, it really delivered some very strong points. It comes at 129, which is basically $20 more expensive than the Zara one, but it is a thousand times better. This fabric is very substantial. It is waterproof. So if we follow that same test, you see how it just drips out? So this is what you want a trench coat to do. Because if a coat is done in a gabardine, which is usually what trench coats are done in, it was invented by Burberry. Unlike the coats that were done before then, which basically had a coating over it of wax or of rubber, which made it very hard to make it breathable, to make it comfortable. With gabardine, the singular individual threads of the cotton are covered in a rubberized material. So the weaving is still there. So you still get the space between the threads, but those threads are waterproof. So you get breathability, but you also get the water repellent factor. You will see that the collar has those multi strands of stitching, which really helps with the structuring around the neck if you wanna pop it up. And what I love about this one, it was present as well in the H&M one, but I think this is much better made on the Uniqlo version. It has the storm flap. So the storm flap not only has a utilitarian kind of, again, military feel and vibe, to the aesthetic of the coat, but it also has a functionality. So you'll see that when the coat is open collared, like in the reverse that I was talking about, it just follows the classic kind of notch collar design. But back in the day, when people were wearing this under the rain, they would close off the coat completely. So basically the storm flap would open and then you would close this part of the reverse collar inside of the storm flip. So there's a button right here. The reason why this is functional is because you are closing completely the entryway to your collar. So nothing is getting in. It just falls straight down through that flap. This baby also has the epaulette, but it's a little bit more delicate than the H&M one. It's also much better made. You can see that the lines are very straight. And speaking of details, you can see that the buttons are sewn really well. Look at that 
buttonhole. It's just beautifully done. You have the hook around the neck. Again, if you want to really close down that collar, if you pop this, it will stay popped. You can see that it has structure. It's a beautiful, beautiful fabric. If I had to complain about something, it would be, again, the little wrist loops because these are also sewn in. On me, this is a little big. I should try on an extra small, although I do feel that around my shoulders, this is perfect. So maybe if you are a bit taller than me, it'll look better on you. The sleeves mainly seem a bit larger. So it does have that Japanese design feel that is very Uniqlo. If you love that more contemporary kind of modern aesthetic, I think that fits beautifully into that. The buttons could be a little bit better. They are kind of plasticky, but a thousand times more beautiful than the previous options. The belt is really, really long, so I would have to get this cut in a seamstress if I wanted it to look fit and tailored to me. And the buckle on the belt is very plasticky, not very attractive at all. But but overall, for the price, I think this is such a great piece, so well thought out, so well designed, very high quality, it looks and feels extremely substantial. It does have a lining and is 100% polyester, which defeats the purpose of having cotton on the gabardine, but that is true with all of these options. I think it would be very hard to find something affordable with a natural material lining. If you do know about it, leave them down in the comments below so that we can check them out because it's a rarity nowadays. So if you want something that is less than 200 bucks, Uniqlo is your guy. Next contender is from Another Stories. This is $219. It is made 98% cotton, 2% elastane with 100% polyester lining. At least this lining is a little bit cuter, even though that shine doesn't scream luxury to me. I am not a huge fan of this piece, I have to be quite honest. I'm usually a huge fan of Another Stories. I managed to find some good pieces that fit me properly, but for some reason this isn't it first of all it is ginormous on me they sell it as a relaxed fit on the website which i could agree with but it just feels odd on my body for some reason i don't know if maybe i got the wrong size it's also very very long which i find so annoying because it means that you're paying for a coat that if you're my size you're probably going to have to get cut so you're losing 20% of the code that you paid for. It's also a much more simplified design. You don't get the storm flap. You don't get the hooks to really close it down. You don't get those multiple stitchings to give it a bit more structure. It is double-breasted, but I find that the buttons are a bit loud and a bit big and they are again kind of plasticky. The belt itself is not as bad as the Zara one because the loops are a little bit more secure, but it still just looks a bit lazy to me. It has the epaulettes, which is a nice touch. It also is a double epaulette. So you can see that there is the double layering of the fabric, makes it a bit more intentional, a bit more thought through. I'm not crazy about it. For 220 bucks, I find that this is not worth the investment. Whereas this one from Massimo Dutti for 299, which might be steep, I get it. So again, if you don't have that kind of money, Uniqlo is your go-to. You'll do a few alterations, perhaps try on other sizes. It's totally worth it. But this baby, it's gorgeous. First of all, I love the color. I know that these are very classic trench coat, that khaki, beige, sandy color, but this looks so beautiful. It brightens me up. Can you see that? It's a sign that I should keep it. The fabric is waterproof. Why isn't cyan class this fun, you know? You can see here that the little drops stay there, so they will just wash off. It has all of the features of the other coats, but it looks much better produced. It looks very high quality and it is a bit slimmer 
in fit so if you have a classic style like i do i think this fits into your wardrobe perfectly it has a lot of buttons so you manage to close it off in a variety of ways it has internal buttons as well so that when you are crossing over one side of the over the other for double breasting it stays put that stitching is very regular very symmetric the buttons are the best buttons out of all of the options that i've shown you you can see that it is even though it's plastic it's still a bit more high quality it has the branding on it it has the little bit of texture you can always change up buttons but i appreciate the attention to it the epaulettes could have had a button here they decided to just sew it over i guess for cost reasons but they still look good they still look symmetric and proportional and an added detail to to the coat has the back flap beautiful again the hook around the neck and this hook is very good this is the best hardware out of all of the coats it's concealed the base of the neck has those multiple stitchings that will give it structure you can even see it here also around the actual collar you can see that those sort of diagonal stitching will really help keeping it up keeping it popped it's a beautiful 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 coat if i have to point out the biggest flaw it would be the belt other than being too long which is a problem with all of these i have to say the buckle this is so cheap you can already see that it has a few scratches on it as well with a coat that looks this good i would have loved to maybe have had a metal buckle or something lined in the same fabric that would have been a nice touch but even looking at the belt you'll see that there is a lot of structure under it so to keep everything in place and secure i'm telling you massimo ducci to me if you want to make some investments without going crazy into luxury i find it a great option so if we want to point out the winners of this little challenge uniqlo and massimo ducci burberry would be nice but i will be perfectly content with one of these two this is it everyone hopefully if you're looking for a trench coat this has helped give you an idea of what is out there in the market and again if you know about any other brands or trench coat that we might love that have all of those features that we talked about please share it in the comments below so that we can add it to our wish list let me know also if you like this type of video so that i can do perhaps other versions of it as well and we'll see each other again next time